At 2 a.m. on August 5th, a small group of missionaries left Abundant Life Foursquare Church in Bremerton, Washington. The group was headed for a small community in Guatemala City called La Isla with the simple goal to be present, to be a present. I, I want to explain to you what that means and why that matters. Actually, I'm hoping to help you feel what that means. But in order to have any shot of that at all, I need to take you to Guatemala City. All right, Ben, what time is it and where are we? 4 a.m. Sea Tax. Where are we going? We're, we're going to Guatemala. Why are we going to Guatemala? We're for a mission trip to do some good stuff. We're going to do some good stuff. It's too early to be witty. Ben, where are we at? Okay. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. All right, Ben, now where are we? I don't know. We are in Guatemala City. <laughs> Guatemala City is the largest city in Central America. It's home to over three million people. It's everything you'd expect a city to be. Bustling and vibrant and crowded and full of history. Just northeast of the airport, you'll find fine dining, towers, shopping malls, beautiful hotels, Polished marble and walls of glass and chrome railings glint in the sun. Walking the streets, you can imagine you're walking in a North American city like Seattle or Chicago. It is familiar, but just enough different to be exciting. Look at us. We're traveling the world. Isn't this nice? But instead of catching a movie or, or looking for new sunglasses, let, let's go on a trip. After all, we didn't come all the way to Guatemala City to sip on Starbucks and eat at KFC. As we head south, the tall buildings give way to an industrial neighborhood near the airport. After a mile or so, we turn right and enter Colonial Santa Fe. The big city, downtown feeling, is replaced by a dense residential vibe. There are one, two, and three-story houses and apartments built off of each other, one after the next. The only thing differentiating them is the paint color. Power lines crisscross overhead and meet at impossibly crowded poles. The buildings are concrete, roofed with corrugated steel. To the untrained eye of someone from the United States, the streets are unimaginably small and busy. Motorcycles weave through traffic on all sides. Traffic signs and lane markings are disregarded by everyone. The sidewalks are full of vendors selling anything and everything. The cracked concrete streets are awash in the colors of the people and their wares. In this busy and beautiful and crowded corner of the city, we find the final trumpet. It is the church of pastors Eric and Veronica. Hola, mi nombre es Eric Popol, desde Guatemala. Veronica. Who will be our hosts for the week? We are roughly three miles from the shopping malls and the fine hotels. And in those three miles, we have changed worlds. We'll visit the church later, but now I want to take you to La Isla. We head south again, through narrow streets, lined with corrugated steel filling holes in concrete walls. There is a narrow bridge that separates La Isla from the rest of Guatemala City. Spanish for the island, La Isla is an island separated from the rest of the city by cliffs rather than water. It is a pocket of humanity perched precariously atop a sea of green. La Isla is not a safe place. To provide some perspective to that statement, it helps to know that Guatemala City has a murder rate of roughly four times that of Los Angeles, which is, give or take, a similarly sized city. Gang violence, kidnapping, and corruption of the local police are all concerns noted by the United States Travel Department. La Isla is considered dangerous in Guatemala City. Delivery services that are readily available in other parts of the city will not deliver to La Isla due to concerns for the safety of their drivers. The same applies to taxis. Google Street View stops just before the bridge. You can digitally tour downtown. You can see most of Colonial Santa Fe, but you need to visit La Isla in person. It is here in La Isla that we find Jackie's school. A door hung inside a large steel gate leads to a small courtyard. Ahead of you is a derelict church. To your left is a one-story concrete building with a corrugated steel roof. Inside, there are classrooms and desks and supplies. Everything a preschool child needs to start their education. As you walk in, the children smile and wave. 
They recite verses and hand out cards and hugs. It's very nice. For several years, Abundant Life Four Square Church has financially sponsored this small preschool. It is reasonable to ask why. Why does ALFC, a church located 3,000 miles away and separated by language, send money and missionaries to this little school in a little community clinging to cliffs in a massive city? You can't fix the corruption in Guatemala City. You can't fix the gang violence. You can't stop the kidnappings. I don't mean to be a downer here, but the list of things you can't do is incredibly long. The best preschool in the world won't suddenly make a community crime-free and prosperous. And yet the school exists, and ALFC sponsors it, and sends missionaries as often as possible. Why? Because you can. You can make the lives of a few children better by providing them the tools they need to read. By paying for a teacher so they can learn about God and His laws and His forgiveness and His mercy. You can help them learn about emotions and sharing and how to play together and be together and thus, prepared for the world, these children will grow into adults that are less likely to commit crimes and join gangs. That statement is not just me being optimistic. Studies show that quality early childhood education reduces the likelihood of the child growing into an adult that commits crime. Those results are amplified in poorer communities. That's hope founded in evidence and supported by love. That hope of a better future, that glimmering, shimmering, beautiful hope is why ALFC supports Jackie School. We do not send missionaries there to do work that the people of La Isla cannot do. The school is run by locals. Hola, hola, ¿cómo están? Yo soy Raquel, soy maestra y soy directora de esta escuela. Spiritually overseen by a local pastor, and repair work is done by locals as well. Instead, the missionaries come to show those kids and their parents and their community that this church from this impossibly distant land is made of real people like them. People who love them and love God and are loved by God. People like me and Christian, who worked with a local man named William to replace the school's rusted out gutter. People like Ben, who brings shoes and toys and candy with the hopes of making life a little better. In the hopes that his presence will be a present. I started this by saying, I wanted you to understand what be present to be a present means and what it feels like. And we're getting close, but we're not there yet. To get where I want you to go, we need to go to church. Let us, at last, come to the final trumpet. Worship at the final trumpet is loud. You can feel the music in your chest, rattling the air in your lungs as you sing. It pounds and thumps as they sing and jump. It is a visceral experience. On the Sunday I was fortunate to attend, Pastor Craig preached and Wendy translated, and then Pastor Eric opened the altar for prayer. People came up, one or two at first, then more, a steady stream. People cried, prayers were offered. The group of missionaries worked through the crowd, prayed in English for people who speak Spanish to a God who understands everything. We prayed for people whose life is hard, people whose husbands were murdered, people who were struggling, with poverty, people who are struggling with injury, and our hearts broke. We couldn't fix it. We couldn't fix any of it. We couldn't speak to them in their own language, but we were there, and they were there. And most importantly, God was there. Being present to be a present isn't about toys or shoes or candy, although those things are great. It's about caring and showing that we care. And sometimes that present is a child's smile when you hand them candy or their laugh as they watch you miss a ball. And sometimes that present is tears and prayers and love shared with people who are hurting. I'm going to be honest with you. Thinking about this missions trip makes me want to smile and laugh and dance and curl up into a ball and cry. 
It makes me want to do all those things at the same time. There is such beauty and love in Guatemala, and there is such suffering and pain, and they exist, the beauty and the pain, together. In the midst of that contrast, the people of Guatemala do their best to live together. I want to leave you with one last picture. It's evening. We've spent all day playing with kids and hanging gutters and bouncing around on the back of Pastor Eric's minibus. We're sitting in chairs on the patio at the hostel, enjoying the light breeze and the clean feeling of having rinsed off the dirt and sweat of the day. The sun is setting over the city, painting everything in vibrant colors. This is the feeling of a day well spent. I don't know what it feels like to save the world. I don't know what it feels like to end injustice or to free the oppressed, but I do know what it feels like to look at the sun setting over a city and know that at least one small part of it is just a little bit better because of our work. Friends, it's a good feeling.